There's a thermux. Oh, it, and now they're all tired. I see. Who's teaching thermo? Professor Wei Fan? Okay. All right. Well, one time I, you know, my, I uh, got in trouble for this little shenanigan once. I had a class like this. I got angry. I gave a quiz. And then someone said, that wasn't in your syllabus. So then I went and revised the syllabus and reposted it. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, that didn't go so well. They're like, did you just post a revise? I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. And then I made it worse because I actually gave them a really hard problem. They're like, I thought the whole idea was to reward us for being here. You're actually punishing us. Yeah, I'm a slow learner. Okay. So you're going to like this, though. Um, you're actually not going to like that. Sorry about that. OK. You're going you're gonna to like the schedule coming up. So um, today is that. I've ran out of battery, apparently. Oh my god. Oh, well, I'm going to have to live without a battery. Um, so if you look at the schedule up here. Hey, quiet. Thank you. All right. If you look at the schedule up there, you'll see that we have a lecture day, and then we have a full week tomorrow. I mean, next week, sorry. Full week and next week. But then after that, there's only one class in a period of two weeks. All right. And that's because um, you got spring break, and then I have to take a trip. OK? So I think. I, what is posted now is homework five, I think. Written homework five. Is, I think I just looked at it. I'll, sh I'll show it to you in a minute. I want to comment on it for a second. Um, and then you see this thing coming up called project selection. Do you know what this means? First of all, I should mention the following. You guys did a MATLAB homework, and I probably didn't emphasize this, but you know when you, wor when you do MATLAB homeworks, you can work with someone else. It's in the syllabus, but maybe it wasn't clear. So next time you have a MATLAB homework, there'll be two other ones. Um, you can work with another person if you want. Can you submit, like, one? Yeah, one, one solution for two people. Get the same grade, obviously. Don't, don't get a freeloader on your team. <laughs> um, and so this project thing, the, the, it's written again in the syllabus, and it's, um, the idea is to get you guys to use MATLAB on some problem that you define. Okay? Um, so in the past, this, was, this went really well, but it, I, I'm going to drink this probably soon. Um, it was for the junior class, and the junior class had kind of more coursework behind them than you guys have. Okay, so I, I still thought it was a really good experience. I, 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 that's the one thing I grade. I, I enjoy gr looking and seeing what people do and so on. Um, so I still, we're going to still do it, and I'm hoping it's going to work out right. So the idea is that at the, I think the last day of class. If I'm not mistaken, there's a project due. See it down there, project. Okay. And so the point of this project selection is that you have to propose a topic and send it to me for approval. It doesn't have to be like a like a document, just like an email. Like we were thinking of using MATLAB and formulating a model for these linear equations and then solving it or something, you know, something. Okay. The key thing is you're supposed to try to define the problem, okay? Um, and my experience with that is some people have a lot of trouble with that, and I think by definition it might be harder for you than the junior class because you've seen less courses, but we're still going to give it a try. I let people struggle. I shouldn't say that's right. I let people struggle for a while, and eventually I'll help them if I deem it essential. Like they go, I don't, can't think of anything, okay? Then, um, then I'll give them a hand or uh, um, something else, all right? So, but the idea is that you're supposed to, by that date, preferably before that date, because I might iterate with you a few times. Like if I don't like your idea, because sometimes people give me a proposal that's either way too complex. It's like, we'll do this, and I go, I don't think you have any idea what you're getting into. Like that's a partial differential equation. Oh, really? Okay, well, we don't want to do that. So, um, so sometimes it's way too complex, and sometimes it's way too easy. Like, we'll form a three by three matrix and solve it with MATLAB. <laughs> you know? and I'm like, well, that should take you, you know, 20 seconds. So, um, so it's supposed to be a chemical engineering problem. You understand? You're supposed to take some process or something that will require a model, and you're supposed to take that model into MATLAB and solve it. Okay. Now, um, 
I, th I suspect you guys will need more help than in the past, so I'll be willing to do that. Um, so if you look at what we've covered, right, one, you could get some data set somewhere and do some statistical analysis of a data set. You'd have to figure out where to get the data set from. Where do you get data sets? I don't know, the internet, papers, websites? You have to look. You have to work. Find something, okay? You could do some linear algebra problem. You know, probably would involve solving sets of linear algebraic equations, or soon we'll talk about sets of nonlinear algebraic equations. And uh, we're going to give you, a, I think, a homework on so doing a thermal kind of VLE calculation. So, you know, it could be something in that domain. Um, and finally, near the end of the course, you'll see that we're going to um, talk about differential equations. So it should be, and I'll teach you how to solve those in MATLAB. So by the time you do the project, you could solve a differential equation model in MATLAB as well. Okay? Now, one could argue, and I'll ask your opinion on this, that, um, okay, so the project selection date is what? So that gives you a month to do the project. I'd be willing to push back the selection date a little bit, but I don't know how much it'll help you, right? You're not going to learn that much more chemical <laughs> engineering in a week. Um, so I guess we'll just keep it like this. So, but the idea is you should try to come up with an idea and send it to me by email. They're, the project's worth 100 points, whatever that means, right? Because the homeworks are worth 16 points or something, so we don't really know what anything means. But I think it's 10% of the grade, the total grade. And 20% of the project grade is me approving your, your, your project, okay? So um, it's, it's something, it's like me protecting you from yourself, right? Because if you pick a bad project, it'll, it'll, you'll get a low score because you either won't be able to do it or it'll be too simple. So be sure to think about this and you can start sending them to me as soon as you want. You know, if you have some projects, some people are involved in research labs and they're doing stuff that they might, it, you know. So anyway, that's a long-winded way of be prepared for that. Um, I'm going to be actually be traveling um, this day, but I'll try by email to email people back. But it'd be great if I didn't get like, oh, and by the, for the project, you can work in groups of four. Okay? Groups of four. So that means the most important thing now is to try to find three friends. Okay? <laughs> and then figure out later what you're going to do with your three friends. I find finding friends is harder than actually finding things to do once you have friends. Okay? <laughs> so um, you might want to line up your friends now. And, but you can start sending me these project things as soon as you want. Send them this afternoon if you want. All right. So that's the main thing I want to talk about. So if you can just get through the end of next week, you're on easy street, right? No homework, no class. It's party time, I guess, for you guys. All right. So here's the topic you need. So I was going to comment quickly about the homework. Um, so here's your homework that you're going to have to do. It's due next Wednesday. Um, the two problems that you need to solve um, are going to both require that you know the material from today's lecture, but that should be it. Right? So once you get the lecture today, you should be able to do this. Um, the examples, it's very hard for me to come up with a lot of examples of, diff of systems for which you've had the class. Because you've only had, in, in my estimation, two classes, mass and energy balances and thermo. Right? You haven't had anything else. So occasionally I'm going to give you models that look like this and you may not fully understand what the model means, but you can still work with it like an equation. Okay? It just, it just so, it's just hard for me to come up with you know, tanks filling full of liquid in for <laughs> mixing two streams together or something like that. So um, some of the problems, you know, traditionally in, when I taught this class, I would ask you to derive these equations as part of the problem, but now I'm just going to give them to you and I'm hoping that at least for most of them you'll have some idea what the equations mean. You'll certainly learn all this stuff when you take kinetics, okay? And from a problem like this, I think it'll be pretty easy to know if you just know stoichiometry. So. You'll have to bear with me on those type of things, but it's just the way it is, right? All right. On to the... Um, <laughs> really disappointed. I'm not, my wife says I'm not very flexible, so I don't know if this is indication that I'm not able to adapt. Whatever. Okay. So I'll stand over here. So we're going to talk about um, matrix inverses, right? If you were at the help session yesterday, um, I put you through the torturesome activity of doing um, Gaussian elimination to, to find a solution to three sets of coupled linear algebraic equations and then at the end someone said, shouldn't we just take the matrix inverse? And I was like, yeah, and that's basically what I did. 
So today I'm going to teach you how to calculate the inverse of a matrix analytically, you know, like you would need to do on homeworks and tests, and then soon I'll teach you how to do it um, using MATLAB. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to revisit and in more detail talk about, so at this point and for the foreseeable future, um, this is our obsession. We talk about nothing but this, okay? Sets of linear algebraic equations. We're given the matrix A. We're given the vector B. A here is a, you know, n by n matrix. So at this point it's square. Later it won't be square. B is a yeah, column vector, n dimensional. And we're trying to solve this problem for the unknowns x. So last time we learned, or I guess Tuesday we learned, that just having n equations, you know, just having it, this problem doesn't guarantee a solution exists or the solution is unique. It depends on the properties of A and B as to whether this is true. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Then to do the matrix inverse, um, you have to do something called determinants. I bet you had determinants when you took calculus because everybody does, okay? And then I'll talk about an extension of the, Ga of the Gauss method called Gauss-Jordan elimination to find the inverse of a matrix. It's like Gauss um, squared in terms of number of operations. So it's but it, it's uh, the way you can find the inverse of a matrix. All right, so we talked about this last time. So if we take this matrix, so we have the system of equations AX equal B, also drawn on the board. You form this augmented matrix by taking the matrix A and forming another column, which is B. And then you form this augmented matrix we call A tilde, okay? And so the question we want to ask ourselves is when does this solution of AX equal B have a solution? That's existence. And when is the solution unique? And last time I gave you three examples. One where it existed unique, one where it existed not unique, and one where it didn't exist at all. Okay? So this is easy to check based on properties of A and A tilde. Okay? So the first thing is whether the system's consistent. By consistency, that's another way of saying solutions exist. Okay? So uh, it says system has solutions if and only if, and I'll explain the if and only if part. If the, ma if the two matrices A and A tilde, right? A is the same as A tilde except it has another column. If they have the same rank, okay? So in other words, you, form you have a matrix A. It has some rank. It doesn't matter what the rank is, okay? You remember the maximal rank of an n by n matrix is n. So if this is 3 by 3, the maximal rank is 3. But at this point, I'm saying I don't care what the rank of the matrix A is. It doesn't have to be N. It just has to be anything. The key thing is if I add B to it, it cannot increase the rank. Okay? So think of it this way. If I have a 3 by 3 matrix and, I, and it's got a rank of 3 and I add a column, there's no way to increase the dimension, the rank of the matrix. The rank of a matrix can only be the, 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 mini, uh, the number of columns or rows of the matrix. So if you have a like this, this system up here would be 3 by 4. If it was 3 by 3, and then I added a column, it would be 3 rows and 4 columns. That can have maximal rank 3. Okay? So there's, there, if A has rank 3, then it's guaranteed that A tilde will have rank 3. Okay? <clears throat> but at this point, I'm not limiting myself to that. A can have rank 2 or 1 or whatever. Um, the key is that A tilde has to the same rank A is. So in other words, I have some matrix that has some rank. I add another column to it. If the matrix A is rank deficient, it's less than N, then I could possibly increase the rank by adding a column to it. But this says, if you want to have a solution, that must not be the case. That you must not be able to increase the, the rank of the matrix by adding this other column to it. Okay? So in other words, t look at A, find the rank. Look at A tilde, find the rank. And if those two ranks are the same, your guaranteed solutions exist. Okay? I don't know if you've seen this in math, this if and only if. This is necessary and sufficient condition. It's the strongest thing you can have in mathematics. Um, it means the two things are equivalent to each other. Like sometimes something is true. Like you have, a st you have something like A. And if A is true, B is true. But it's possible B might be true and A not be true. Okay. Necessary and sufficient means this. If A is true, B is true. And if B is true, is A is true. They're the same thing. They're equivalent to each other. Okay. It's the strongest result you can have in math, okay? So in other words, if, if the thing is going to have solutions, then this has to be true, and o it'll only have solutions if this is true, okay? There's no other way. All right, so that is a long-winded way of saying, if you want to ensure the problem has solutions, make sure the two matrices have the same rank. If you want the solutions to be unique, okay, now that you've established they exist, then the matrix A has to have rank R. Um, 
Ah, the matrix A has to have rank N. Okay? If the matrix A has rank N, then you're guaranteed the first thing is true. Because you, if you add another column to a matrix that's full rank, it can't increase the rank anyway. So if the matrix A has full rank N, then you're guaranteed to have a solution by definition of the first part of consistency, and you're guaranteed the solution is unique. So you remember what a matrix having full rank means, right? It basically means all the equations are linearly independent of each other. So if A is a 3 by 3 matrix, has rank 3, it means the three equations are all independent. They all have id additional information. They're not redundant in any way. Okay? The last one is, if you have the case where the um, first one is true, okay? A and A tilde have the same rank, but now you add the column, okay? Uh, oh, sorry. Screwed this up. Um, the third one, okay, so, so now we, if the system's going to have solutions, the first thing has to be true, but that means the two matrices have to have the same rank, but if they have the same rank and the rank is less than N, so it's a three by three matrix and the rank is two, for example, then they'll have solutions, but they won't be unique. All right? So in other words, I think, you know, when most people deal with systems of linear equations, they think three equations, three unknowns, I'm good to go, right? But that's not true. <laughs> You might have no solutions, you might have an infinite number of solutions. It just depends on the properties of A and B of the particular problem you're solving. And it's easy to check if you can calculate the rank of the matrices. All right. So here's some implications of all that. Um, first of all, let's say you have this system. So that's the homogeneous problem. I'm sure you're using that terminology in your differential <coughs> equation class. So the B vector is zero. It, I don't know if it's a bold zero, but it should be. It's a vector of zeros. And so if I form the augmented matrix, that just means the last column is a bunch of zeros. Okay? So you know you don't need to be a rocket scientist to look at that first equation and say one solution to that is a vector x equals zero. Right? Ax equals zero. <coughs> x equals zero is a solution to that, for sure. Okay? The question is, are there other solutions to that problem other than x equals zero? Okay? So in order for other solutions to exist, that means you have to fall into case three here, right? Because the first case is no solutions, right? You, that's not of interest. It's not the case either. Uh, the second one is uniqueness. And so if you want an additional solution other than x equals zero, you have to fall into the third thing here, okay? Infinite number of solutions. And so that's only going to be true if the rank is, is um, less than n. Okay? So that's all it says. So if you have a homogeneous system, a guaranteed one solution is what we call the trivial solution, x equals zero. There's going to be other solutions which we call non-trivial. In other words, the vector is not all zeros. If and only if the rank of that matrix A is less than n. Okay? If the rank of the matrix A is equal to n, there's only one solution. It's called x equals zero. All right? And sometimes you'll hear this terminology. I don't know. So people... Let's say someone, they, someone might say something like, X is contained in the null space of A. You're like, oh, what? <laughs> that's, just, that's just a way of saying, if, X is in the, if a particular vector X is in the null space of A, it means if I multiply A on the left-hand side times X, I get zero. That, they say a, a vector that satisfies this is said to be in the null space of the, of the matrix A. Just terminology. All right? All right. <laughs> so let's say you have a non-homogeneous system, okay, and this is another thing you should have learned in differential equations. I'm sure in differential equations right now they're marching you through every known, like start with a single linear differential equation, right, and then you guys are doing, you did like integrating factors, I'm assuming, and all this kind of stuff, okay. So you've done, you know, homogeneous and non-homogeneous and first order and second order and all this, so so this, this is like um, what you see for differential equations with non-homogeneous problems. So for a uh, set of linear equations, the problem is non-homogeneous if this B is not zero. Okay? If it's zero, it's homogeneous, otherwise non-homogeneous. And if you want to find the solution to that, just like you do in differential equations, you can write the solution as the sum of two things. Okay? The first thing, um, well, I actually do the second thing. So it's the sum of x0 plus xh. So xh is the solution of the homogeneous problem. So in other words, you want to solve this problem in principle, okay? 
First thing you do is pose this problem. Find the solutions to this. The solutions of this are called H. Okay? Homogeneous. Okay? We know one solution for this is x equals zero, right? There might be other solutions that are non-zero. Depends on the nature of the matrix A. Alright. Then you also have to find something called a particular solution. That means you have to find one solution that's a solution of this. Okay? And then it says all solution, all possible solutions can be written as that. So x equal a particular solution plus the homogeneous solution. You've seen that in differential equations, right? I gotta believe. <coughs> or I'm not sure what they're doing in there otherwise. All right? Now, that's nice. That's, you know, usually not how we actually find them, but it parallels nicely what you see in differential equations. All right, so if we go back, these are the... If I'm not mistaken, these are the two examples or three examples I gave you last. No, they're not actually. These are because the examples I gave you last time were three dimensional. But so these are two by two systems that exhibit all three possibilities. Okay. So the first one is you see the top system up there. Fine. Um, if you check the matrix of the how do you check the rank of a matrix? Do you remember that? You can do the Gauss um, elimination. You can find the row echelon form. You can check the rank by doing that. But at this point, I'm just giving you the answer. I'm telling you, which you can probably see because it's so simple. The rank of the matrix um, uh, A is 2. The only way it could not be 2 is if I could multiply the first equation, the first row, and get the second row. Right? It's easy to check the rank of a 2 by 2 matrix. There's, no, nothing, there's nothing I can do to multiply the first row and get the second row. So by definition, it's rank 2. All right? Now, if I look at the column, um, if I look at the adding the augmented matrix, so for this guy, the augmented matrix would look like and then okay, my claim is and I check all this in MATLAB, of course, is that the um, rank of that matrix is actually um, 2. Okay? Well, I guess it's not, a, you don't have to claim that. The maximal rank this can have is 2. So if you have a matrix like this, it's non-square, the maximal rank is, is either the minimum number of rows or the minimum number of columns. Okay? So in other words, if you have a 2 by 2 matrix that's full rank, rank 2, there's no way to increase the rank of a, by adding a column. It's not possible. Because the, the rank can be no greater than the minimum number of columns or the minimum number of rows, in this case, two. Okay? So that's, I guess I didn't even need to write that. It's by construction. Okay? And if you wanted to solve this set of equations, you could. You'd find the solution is minus one and one. So it's unique, obviously exists. Here's another problem. All I did for this problem is I changed the 2, 2 element of the matrix. Well, that's not true. I changed a couple of things. Changed the A matrix and the B vector. Okay? <coughs> Now, if you look at the matrix A, okay, I hope you can see that's rank 1, right? Because if I multiply the first row by 3, it's equal to the second row. Okay, that makes it rank deficient, and that makes it rank 1, okay? Now, this one is actually remotely interesting, I think. So, what is this? So, it's 1, 2, 1. Then, what's the next one? Three, six, three. Okay, right. That's the augmented matrix, the A tilde. Now, uh, clearly, that has rank one, two, right? Because if you take this row and multiply it by three, you get the second row. So, you know, it's possible if you have a two by two matrix that has rank one, most B vectors will increase the rank to two, but not that B vector because I chose it very carefully. It doesn't increase the rank. That means the rank of A and the rank of A tilde are both equal to 1. That means the solution exists, but it's not unique. And that's the solution I wrote up there for any number A. Okay. You can see why the choice of B is really critical, right? Because if, if the equations are redundant to each other, then you have to have the same thing on the right-hand side, right? I mean, you have one equation that says x1 plus 2x2 equals 1. Okay. You can see that this, the, the second row is nothing but the first row of A multiplied by 3, so B better be the same thing, because you only have one equation, they better be the same, right? If you want to have any solution existing at all. So for example, 
if you had this situation, and this thing was not three but two, that, that has no solution at all. Right? There's no x1 and x2. Oh, sorry, this is x2 here. Okay. You see, it's critical this number here is 3. That's what I, my point, because if I multiply this times 3, I get this equation back. So I have one equation, two unknowns. Okay? I shouldn't probably have said that. <laughs> Scratch that from the record, as they say in court of law. All right. Um, so the final one is no solutions at all, which is kind of what I was trying to point out, but didn't do it well. So you look at the third problem there. You have, um, well, I guess I kind of did, but whatever. There's a new A, there's a new B. Um, so if you look at the rank of A, it's the same as the matrix above, so obviously the rank of A is 1. But if you look at the rank of A tilde now, so it's the same problem, and now this number is 1. You see, not, now you've got a problem because you have um, basically two equations that can't possibly have a solution. Okay. They look just like the ones I put the x through because I jumped to a conclusion there. Right, the only way this, for this thing to have a solution is you can see the, right -hand si the left hand side of these things are equivalent. So if this is 3 times that, this is 3 times that, this better be 3 times that or this isn't going to have a solution. Okay. So matrix A has rank 1, but I added to call the column B and now I've increased the rank to 2 and now that thing has no solution at all. Okay. So what's the value of this type of thing? The value is that you can ch check whether a problem has a solution by looking at A and A tilde without actually finding the solution. Okay? So you, you might say, well, is that any more efficient? Because you told me the way I have to find the solution is to do Gauss, I mean, to find the rank, you have to do Gaussian elimination as well. <laughs> right? But at least you don't have to do the back substitution thing. Okay? And this is something MATLAB uses when we st start seeing how to do it in MATLAB to find out whether the solution is going to exist or not. Okay. So on to determinants, which I, I guess you've seen in some context. Did, they don't teach linear algebra at all in your differential equation class, right? Okay. All right. So determinant is an operation on a matrix. It's an operation that takes a matrix and produces a scalar as the result. It has different notation. Sometimes you'll see this determinant parenthesis A, or you'll see the bar A. They both mean det determinant of A. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just tell you what the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is. This is very commonly used, especially in this class. So to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, you take the two diagonal elements, 1, 1, and 1, 2, multiply them together, and subtract the two off diagonal and multiply together, 1, 2, and 2, 1. Okay? Just a, at this point, just consider a definition. So if I gave you this little toy example here, okay, one, two, three, four, that would, you take the determinant by taking one times four, the two diagonal elements, subtract that, two di off diagonal elements, multiply together two and three, four minus six minus two, okay? So that's, um, dare I say, trivial, right? Three by three matrix, a little more complicated, but if I had my clicker, I could show you how you memorize this equation. But, uh, well, I'll have to do it over here. So you don't need to memorize this equation, right? Because it's open book, open note. But if you wanted to, you want to take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. It has six terms, okay? The first term is the, the three diagonal things multiplied these three together. The next term is that one times that one times that one. In other words, you just kind of take these diagonals and then when you go over here, you wrap it around. Next term is two, one, uh, one, two, two, three, two, three, one. And then finally, you get that one times that one, times that one. That's that third term over there. Then you go backwards in the matrix. That way, okay? That, well, I guess they actually start over here. This, this, and this is the second term. Then these guys is the third term. Then finally, the last term is those guys, okay? So I've done this enough where, okay, I've memorized it. Um, but the point is, it's, you can always just look it up. It's fine. And so, this allows you to take a, a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So there's an example with some pretty creative numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. All right. Um, picked them poorly because if you, if you multiply all these things, all I did was apply that formula, right? At this point, hopefully we're comfortable with the idea that the first index means the row and the second index means the column. So just pick those elements out of the matrix, multiply them together. It's onerous. 
and it's labor intensive. But when you're all, when it's all said and done, it ends up somehow that equals zero. Just serendipity, I guess. All right. Um, let's say you had a four by four matrix. I haven't given you a formula for that. I'm not going to give you four by four problems in the class. Okay. But if you want to take the determinant of four by four matrix, you'd have to do something more, and it's based on co using cofactors. Is that introduced in your differential equation class? No, cofactors. Okay, it's in the textbook. Okay, so I'm not going to cover it because it's we don't really have time, and we're not going to do problems that large. But I don't want you to think a determinant can only be calculated by three by three system. You can calculate it for a problem of any size by using the concept of cofactors. But I'm just not teaching it to you. Okay, but if you want to see that, you can look in the book. All right, so here's some nice properties of determinants um, that you might use. So if you take a determinant of the matrix A, it's, the, it's equal to the determinant of the matrix A transpose. In other words, A and A transpose generally aren't equal to each other, but their determinants are. You remember A prince, uh, superscript T means the transpose. Switch the rows and columns. Let's say you have a diagonal or triangular matrix. Okay, the first one's diagonal. Second matrix is upper triangular. Third matrix is lower triangular. Okay? That the determinant of those things is all the same and it's just equal to all the diagonal elements multiplied together. Okay? That's nice because that says you can find the determinant of a, of a triangular matrix or diagonal matrix of any size. Like I could give you a 20 dimensional triangular matrix, you just multiply the 20 elements on the diagonal, that'd be the determinant. Okay? I won't, but you could. All right, let's say you want to take the determinant, you have a matrix A that you can multiply with a matrix B, you aspire to take the determinant of the, the product of those two, then that's equal to the determinant of A alone times the determinant of B alone. That's kind of convenient, I guess, because you don't have to do the multiplication. Okay. All right, let's say you have a matrix that has either a row of all zeros or a column, sorry, a row of all zeros or a column of all zeros. That's guaranteed to give you a determinant of zero. Okay? So if you look at a matrix and any row has all zeros or any column has all zeros, that matrix has a determinant of zero. It's guaranteed. Because you can kind of see that when you go back to the formula I gave you for a three by three matrix. Um, that, sorry, I know some of you are writing, but if you look at like this formula, for example, you'll see. This term always involves one element from one row in every column. So if you have one entire row or column that's zero, every one of these has a zero terminant. And that expands to problems that are larger as well. Okay. Let's say I gave you a matrix. Again, everything we're talking about is a square matrix. Um, and this matrix had either linearly dependent rows or linearly in the, or linearly dependent rows or linearly dependent columns, right? We, Remember what linearly dependent means, I hope? It means I can take rows and multiply them together by constants and add them and get another row, right? If you have a matrix that has either linearly dependent rows, which would mean <coughs> equations, okay, or linearly independent columns, that will give you a zero determinant, okay? So, for example, if you took the determinant of this matrix right there, that two by two matrix, that's guaranteed to be zero. Because the two rows are linearly independent. It's not hard to see, right? The determinant is... Just do it real quick. I'm going to change the color here, color scheme. So the determinant of this guy, which is A, not A tilde now. Right, you multiply the two diagonal elements, one times six, 